Conversations on Dance at the Vail Dance Festival is generously underwritten by the town of Vail. I'm Rebecca King Ferraro. And I'm Michael Sean Breeden, and you're listening to Conversations on Dance. Hi, all. thank you so much for joining us today. Of We're course. so excited to have you yeah. on. This is an awesome opportunity. I'm so excited. Ah. <laughs> so, you know, I think you said you listened to the podcast before, so you know that we always start with, mm-hmm. how did you get your start and dance moment? Yes. And I was talking to you earlier today, and you are from a musical family. So I presume that that I, maybe had was some sort I, of avenue for you. Actually, yes. So it's interesting. I, I got started in music at age three. I took piano lessons for 10 years, oh, wow. eighth grade. So piano was like my main form of art um, until one fateful day. My sister was doing ballet classes, just like, yeah, she's younger. Um, and she was doing ballet classes very casually. And because of that, we watched this film, I'm sure you've seen it, called First Position. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And and it was on that on that film that I saw a young Arndell at you know eleven or twelve years old riding a unicycle doing the Corsair variation. Yeah, all the Sagan turns, and I said, I want to do that. I know I you know I haven't thought about that in so long. <laughs> it's so funny to see Arndell now and just... that's crazy. And he's here at the festival. And he's yeah. here. It's a f- crazy full. Wow, oh, I love that. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I'd always been a very active kinesthetic kid um i did gymnastics i like taught myself how to do a backflip um i did diving so i i've always always been fascinated in like jumping and and flying right and kind of just seeing how far i can stretch you know the limits of of gravity and the human body um so ballet just like seemed like a natural a natural fit yeah. 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 That's really great. Mm-hmm. So then how did you actually, so your sister's dancing, mm-hmm. how are you like, okay, I'm going to formalize this and really get started with yeah. ballet, ballet? Well, it wasn't, so I, I took open adult classes for about a year after I saw first position. Mm. And that was just a bombardment of learning ballet technique and vocabulary. Um, and just like building, building the basic, um, building blocks for mm. for dance and just uh, fostering a love for movement. And that was at a small studio in a church um, close to where I lived in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, the teacher there, Carolyn Santa Nicola, love her, still take class with her. Aww. He's in her 80s, <gasps> but she danced with the Ballet Rusty de Monte Carlo oh my back gosh. in the day. Very um, cool. So it was very cool. She really fostered a sense of love for dance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after about a year of that, um, I did a steps summer intensive where I was just like exposed to hip hop and jazz and tap. Mm-hmm. Um, but still I, I loved ballet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then after that, uh, my, my parents decided to audition me for a bunch of schools. Uh-huh. SAV was one of them. I did not get in, but, <laughs> <laughs> but then I got into ballet Academy East mm-hmm. and that's where I, and this, this was in eighth grade at the start of eighth grade for me. Yeah, And I started at BAE six days a week. I was an eighth grader taking the most basic technique classes, Mm -hmm. starting in level one and two, um, you know, with Darla Hoover. And just, it was, it was tough because I was so used to just taking open adult classes and like not just flailing, flailing myself (laughs) around. Yeah. But um, here I was in, in this class with first graders Mm -hmm. and I was, it was, it was a little demoralizing but oh <laughs> well did you take to it right away did you like the challenge of kind of getting that technique to be honest no no <laughs> i can see it's probably so challenging yeah, because i you know i knew what a, a a ton of flesh was right and i was stuck doing tondu all day with my hand on my shoulder right right uh, like, yeah yeah so r- r- rudimentary stuff mm-hmm. um right. so how did you move past that though because i mean you, like you must have had a, you know, a sense of frustration, but you also see what's possible. You, right. You're going to get back to that Tom to flesh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I think actually it was, it was me thinking about college that really kept me going with, with ballet. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't love music mm-hmm. actually. Um, even, even though, though you're I, playing the piano, even though I'm playing the piano, it, um, 
there was a lot of, I think, pressure and being told what to do. I didn't really like being in lessons and didn't like sitting down practicing. I, I liked moving around. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, but I think when I, so I, I, I was able to quit piano to do ballet mm -hmm. six days a week. Um, but I think, you know, throughout high school, I was really starting to think about what I wanted to do in college. And I knew that ballet would um, definitely help with college admissions. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of one of the one of the one things that I had going for me outside of academics. So I, I you know, just stuck through it and kept going. And it's actually funny because I didn't truly love it. Um, I, I was getting better and better and improving at a pretty quick pace, I think. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, um, I remember having a, a bit of a revelation my senior fall mm -hmm. in like December um, where I was, I, we were learning Chai Pa, uh -huh. you know, Chai Pa variation. And in the middle of it, I was just flying and I was mm. like doing this Entre Chassis and mm. I was just like, I love this now. Mm. Like I've, I'd finally gotten to the point where I felt like I could do, you know, any variation mm -hmm. um, and, and do it correctly with right technique. And, and it was just, the music was inspiring me and the dance and it, it was an, it was a surreal, like, spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when I finally came back to loving it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how then, so you, you were using it as something that would support your academic pursuits. Mm -hmm. Tell us what colleges you got into and what you were considering and how right. ballet crossed over with that. Yeah. So, so like I said, I mean, if you're, if anyone's familiar with the American college um, cycle, there's an early dis or early application cycle that um, uh, where the deadline is in November. Mm. And I mentioned that I had my ballet revelation in December. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, so you know, what's interesting is I, I actually went to a technical high school, mm -hmm. Bergen County Academies. I majored, I majored, quote, in engineering and design technology. Oh wow! Um, what were you going to do with that? Or you were just you just like? <laughs> well, I mean, name? going back, I mean, I've always loved just building things: Legos, building dominoes, contraptions, planes, paper planes, origami. Um, so cool. it seems kind of like the natural thing. Like I knew that I wanted to. As soon as I heard the term mechanical engineer, I was like, I don't know what they do. But it sounds like something that I would love. <laughs> so, right to me. so in eighth grade, I applied to this public magnet high school, and I luckily got in. I was the only one in my school too from eighth grade, um, and that just you know set me on a path of being so immersed in technology and learning what there is to learn in college, basically. Um, and so because of that. I was surrounded by so many talented, aspiring engineers. Mm -hmm. um, I only applied to tech schools early. Mm -hmm. So like Georgia Tech, yeah. MIT, Caltech, you know. And I don't think I got into any of them, any of like the big tech schools. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit of a crisis. Yeah. And ballet, ballet came along, like, and I was like, oh. Maybe I should dance. <laughs> like I have to apply to dance schools and conservatories, and like maybe I want to major in dance. Um, but then my parents, my parents are both musicians, and um, I'm forever grateful for for you know them being in the artistic music music industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is one thing that I'll be forever grateful is that they both have you know degrees in other things right my dad had a pre-law degree from japan my mom has an architecture degree wow. um and they really i think reinforced the importance of having a solid education mm -hmm. and not just going for the arts because they know firsthand how how grueling mm -hmm. the art industry is mm -hmm. Well, and musicians have a much longer career too even right. than dancers so yes it's really yes. even more important for dancers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from that perspective and and i think it's also that they were a bit unfamiliar with the dance 
um, industry mm -hmm. because they're musicians. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of crossover, mm -hmm. but they don't quite have um, the insight that they would if they were dancers. Right, of course. Um, so because of that, I scrambled <laughs> to, to get my applications in for a bunch of liberal arts schools. Uh, and I was lucky enough to get accepted into, into Princeton. Um, and Princeton was really the only school um, that had an engineering and a dance program right. that accepted me. Um, so, I, I mean, you know, made in with, heaven. With, with Ivy Leagues, it's just, it's just a lottery. You never know yeah. what's going to happen. But I was so, I was just so lucky and so excited mm -hmm. when that, when that acceptance letter came in. Yeah. So tell me a bit about your day to day. Um, you know, you're majoring in engineering and then mm -hmm. you're also squeezing in dance. I mean, I got to see first in a little bit of, yes. of what that was like. Yeah, I mean, we worked together back in fall 2021, Ooh. right? Um, yeah, I, was, I think it was like or, maybe the first thing yeah. I got to do in person. We were all right. masks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was such a fun experience. Were um, you a freshman? No, I was a uh, junior. Junior, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Um, but I guess a day-to-day, -day, I mean, I get asked this question a lot, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of like a continuation of high school. High school, I did engineering mm -hmm. during the day, you know, 8 a.m. To, to 3. Right. And then I would commute into the city. My parents would drive me often and do ballet from, you know, 4.30 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. Um, it was kind of like that in right. college. You know, I had my classes in the morning, uh, typically um, engineering focused. Some uh, during my senior year, I, I was I was done with most of my requirements pretty early. So my senior year, I just took arts. Like I just I did, all I did you know <laughs> musical theater, painting, uh -huh. yeah, cinema. Um, but That's cool. But it was yeah. I guess um, you know I took my classes in the mornings, squeezed in whatever work I had to do, um, P sets and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and during the evenings I would, I would dance, mm -hmm. um, at Princeton, there are sort of two worlds, I guess, of dance, one being the dance department directed by Susan Marshall and Rebecca Legier, both amazing humans and the student run dance world, um, which includes, you know, almost, I think over 20 different dance groups mm -hmm. um, with their own niches. Wow. Yeah. So I was in Princeton University Ballet Pub. Um, <laughs> there's one called Body Hype, which um, is kind of like a fusion of, of street styles, contemporary, lyrical, and, and just like just a, a, a collection of mm -hmm. really amazing dancers. And another one, Triple Eight, which is a east asian fusion dance company oh cool yeah um so between the dance department productions which uh michael you came and staged justin peck's rodeo for um for our 2021 princeton dance festival that was awesome um between those rehearsals and student dance rehearsals you know i'd be i'd be rehearsing anywhere from 4 30 p.m to 1 a.m yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is did you have any extra homework, any other work you had to do? Of course, you had I mean, to study. Got yeah, I had to study. I had campus jobs, but I was able to to juggle it somehow wow. because I mean, it's it's what I grew up doing. Right. right. You kind of been preparing um, for this. Yeah. Yeah. So in a way, I it wasn't overwhelming or anything mm -hmm. going That's in. Good. Yeah, and. Like I said, my, my high school is very rigorous and it prepared me well. So a lot of the times I, um, a requirement for mechanical engineering um, taught things that I already learned in high school. Right. So, <laughs> and That's if nice. they, if they happen to be like morning classes, I would just skip those mm -hmm. and get extra sleep yeah. <laughs> or have extra time to study right, right. or do whatever. How do you think ballet factors into the work you do with mechanical engineering. Is there crossover? Yeah, I mean, I think there is. Uh, this is something that I always am grateful for, that I have, a, a you know, this liberal arts, artistic dance background um, is where I work right now. Everyone is um, so such talented and um, 
in engineering and technology, but I often find that having an, a liberal arts um, and just being in the arts, involved in the arts, gives you a certain perspective um, that a lot of people um, don't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. um, I think ballet really, for sure, teaches you good work ethic. Mm -hmm. It teaches you how to, you know, a lot of the times you watch someone dance and you like try to figure out, try to pick apart how they do it right. and try to replicate it. I use that skill a lot mm -hmm. um, in engineering, for example, if you know, we're trying to develop something, I'll look at how it's been done in the past and try to recreate it. Um, there's a lot of problem solving in dance and it goes both ways too. Like the things that I learned in my engineering career just help in my, in my dance endeavors as well. Yeah. Just that sort of scientific, um, almost research oriented, um, approach to things. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, the arts just, uh, I don't, I, without the arts, I don't, I don't know what I would be. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder you know? if there could be a potential crossover for you with choreography as, you know, for the, with this engineering background, with its design, you know, being interested in that. I wonder if you've had those thoughts or if we're, we're maybe looking into yeah. the future for something. Like oh that. yeah. Well, that's always something that I'm thinking about. Uh -huh. um, the work that I do in engineering is um, more prototyping. I, I, kind of am a generalist, like a Swiss army knife of engineering. Mm -hmm. um, even though my major was mechanical, I do a lot of programming, data analysis, electrical engineering, and, you know, aeronautical flight testing. Mm -hmm. So all of these different disciplines in engineering, I feel like there's, there's something there. Mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, barely a year into my career, but it's um, definitely something that I am always thinking about, like thinking about how, I can incorporate these engineering things that I'm learning into the arts and dance and and music. Um, so, so yeah. cool! I love right. it. Yeah. Um, last year, you were the scholar in residence at Yes. Yes. Well, can you tell us about how that came about? Yeah. So, um, as as is with many <clears throat> festival artists and scholars, it was it was Heather. Um, so I was, uh, this was my senior year of college. I was, um, I actually, so I wasn't even taking this class, um, but this, there was this, there's this class that our amazing dance department ballet professor, Tina Fallant teaches. Um, and my senior year was called ballet as an evolving form mm -hmm. technique and repertory. And in that class, um, Tina brings this slew of amazing, incredible guest artists, um, typically from New York. Um, and I wasn't taking the class. I wasn't enrolled, but I saw Heather's name on it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I had to take that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I'd worked with Tina several for several semesters mm -hmm. prior. Um, I was a TA for her intro to ballet class and and had taken her you know spring ballet course it's it's kind of a legendary course hmm. in the in the dance department um almost everyone takes um even if they're not you know ballet dancers they take it because it's such a exciting and, and awesome place mm -hmm. um and and the guests i mean heather watts <laughs> coming. Mm -hmm. and and so for two weeks um i, I believe it was you know towards the end of march or something um, for two weeks, I showed showed up, took Heather's classes, and um, she took notice of me um, because, as as you know, BAE was a very Balanchine oriented mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I would I would help her demonstrate some of the you know the very specific Balanchine things that that Heather was you know lecturing about, mm -hmm. and. You know, I, I was staying and talking with her after class and, and um, just about my education at Princeton and my journey up till that point. And I think Heather was just intrigued at the dual nature of my journey, being mm -hmm. an engineer and a dancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, at the towards the beginning of April, she officially invited me to be one of the scholars in residences, along with Spencer Linane. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and that was that was such a surreal moment um for me um because i um my my mother actually she plays in the new york philharmonic mm. oh, and wow. she's um actually been ta- she had been taking me to vale to play in the bravo vale festival uh, the music festival since i was one or two years mm-hmm. old so and how did yeah. you know this well, I mentioned it to Heather and, and she said, are you going to be there this year? And I said, well, yes, of course. And she said, well, if you're going to be there already, um, just stay and, and we'll give you a place to live for the for the week and a half and wow. we'll just get you involved. Yeah. Did you do that again this year too? Yes, actually. So I, I, I did. I, I took some vacation days from work to, to join my mom for the music festival for a bit. And then I just, um, I, yeah, I got my own hotel and stayed for the, for the rest of the dance festival. So it was, it was really awesome. What were some of the things that being a scholar in residence entailed last year? Um, so last year I, um, did a, we're good. Oh, I, so last, last year I learned a Merce Cunningham piece mm-hmm. called the run. Uh, with Melissa too good. Mm-hmm. That was so awesome. It was just, you know, in, in traditional veil fashion, a smorgasbord of yeah. dancers, including Unity Phelan and uh, Lil Buck mm-hmm. and Spencer. And it was just a surreal experience because yeah. they're all dancers that I'd grown up idolizing and, and right. watching. Um, I did that. I also participated in Heather's watching dance lecture, mm-hmm. and as well as the up close uh, with Damien, mm-hmm. I I got to dance the finale of Western Symphony oh, fun. Right, right across Damien Wetzel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. And then this year, are you dancing at all as part of the festival, or what are your yeah? So here? so this year, um, it was you know kind of serendipitous. I I joined Larry Kegwin's community piece, Rhapsody. Oh, yeah. Um, along with many of the dancers, Kayla, Alessio, um, and Savannah. Um, and then actually, Heather and Damien asked me to play, uh, play a little bit of piano and tap during the intermission jam tonight. Uh, that's tonight. tonight. That's tonight. Oh, my yeah. God. Yay. So I've, I've kind of fi- found myself slotting into these different roles um, and I think, you know, that's, that's part of why I feel like Heather was so intrigued by me is, is that I come from a family of musicians and mm-hmm. have, um, you know, a decade of musical training yeah. as well as a, almost, yeah, a decade of dance training. Um, mm-hmm. just, so I, I kind of see myself as a, as a bit of a Swiss army knife there as well. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you thinking? Do you already have your career in engineering? How does ballet and dance fit into that moving forward right now? Do you see it more just as a hobby or are we, what are we thinking? Yeah, I think it's a a mix. Like I, I definitely, um, it's a hobby because I love it and Mm -hmm. I do not think I'll be stopping anytime soon, but, um, in the Bay area, which is where I'm based right now, Uh, I'm finding a lot of paid opportunities. So it is kind of a second career for me. Um, In the Bay, I've just found that the dance community is so tight knit Mm -hmm. and so incredibly welcoming and open to people with full time jobs as well. Um, I've joined a company, it's called Oceanica Ballet, whose artistic directors are both full time biotech. Uh, that's so cool which is so that's cool. so california yeah <laughs> and and the rehearsal schedule works out perfectly so right. i do that and awesome. perform a few shows a year um and you know through these avenues of dance i, I also get referred to other schools and do guestings right. and i'm doing you know this year i'm doing three weekends of nutcrackers of which is you know it's it's awesome to be kind of kind of living this this alternate life outside of work so (laughs) what do your friends at work say like that's so cool that you're like oh yeah i'm busy this weekend i have rehearsal (laughs) they're like i'm on the line right i'm gonna go perform i'm gonna go to do nutcracker yeah i mean like i said a lot of these um the my coworkers are are very engineering focused and i took a lot of them um to see a ballet 
or a dance show for the first time in their lives. Amazing. Um, What'd you go see? Well, they I I dragged them to see me in Oakland Ballet's Nutcracker. Yeah. <laughs> um, with a live orchestra, That's and so it was, wonderful. you know, the perfect, you know, uh, you know, ninety minute long show. It wasn't too long, it was too not too boring. Right. And all my friends loved it, mm -hmm. and it was so fun. And it's it's always fun for me to kind of be the ambassador for mm -hmm. for the arts in a very engineering tech science focused mm -hmm. workplace this is what i always say though too because you never know what these people are going to end up doing they could be donors i know you yeah know? so that's yeah. good you're <laughs> doing the good work yeah that's, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. so great where are you based in in the bay area i grew up in the east bay oh yeah so i live in foster city and my office is in san mateo okay very good yeah so great i mean it makes total sense like i just i was thinking like if you well if you lived in new york i would have I, there, I, people are always asking me, like, do, you have, do we have a, a guy? Right. Like, get, like a, a warm body. Right. Like, on stage and, you know, <laughs> uh, there's just so many opportunities in the Bay Area. As, exactly as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect location. Right. Yeah. Well, it's such a fascinating juxtaposition, and I'm so glad you got to share it with us. It's so interesting, and yeah. I'm sure that you will continue to have great success in both avenues in your yeah. life. So thank you for talking to us, Kyle. Yeah. And yeah. can we see you tonight? Yes. Oh, I'm yes. so excited. Awesome. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be so much fun. Thank you. Thank you all. Conversations on Dance is part of the ACAS Creator Network. For more information, visit conversationsondancepod.com.